The question of decarbonizing is a very interesting one. It's a really complex undertaking for society. From my point of view, decarbonization leads first of all to electrification. There are a lot of processes in industry and in society you can actually put on green electrons and then you decarbonize it. That's about 80% what is possible. Electric cars and transportation, steam production and so on. But of course there's 20% which are hard to decarbonize with electricity because you need a chemical molecule. So you need green electrons and green molecules to decarbonize the society. If you talk about decarbonization and more electrification, it leads automatically to adding renewable energy generation, wind, solar, onshore, offshore, all these things. And that's adding actually uh, two complex things together with that. On one hand, volatility, not always is the wind blowing and the sun is shining. And sometimes you have too much, sometimes you have too less energy. And of course, uh, the location issue, because where you generate is not where you use it or where the demand is. And to combine these things in a way that is working, you need digitalization, you need new processes, you need new solutions. Without digital capabilities, you will not solve that riddle. So the energy triangle is actually what describes all the complex situations you have. That's safety and security. It should be sustainable and it should be affordable. And to combining these three edges or pillars or whatever you call it, that's the very tricky thing. Every area, country, state or utility have to balance these three things uh, for their own situation. For that you need digitalization, for that you need compromises and technical solutions. Historically the grid was not so important because you build energy generation where the demand was. You have a big industrial complex, you build a power plant and then you build industry there. With renewable resources it's different, whereas offshore wind is not where a big industrial complex is. Uh, every country has the same situation. On the other hand, if you have solar, well, it's shining during the day and often not during the night, so you deal with these things. And the grid is actually the middle part, so you have to transport the electrons from where they are generated to where they are used. And the grid is becoming much more important for that, because it was not playing that role maybe 10 or 20 years ago. If you want to connect offshore wind farms uh, to big cities or connect different areas like Canada and New York, you need HVDC to, to make these connections possible. That's the only way, actually. Uh, we have a great experience with that. If you're looking at what we are providing as Hitachi Energy, traditionally we have focused on OT. We have our assets, uh, we run our systems. Uh, with the decarbonization and uh, the renewables coming online, we need IT as well. So the perfect combination of IT and OT is enablement to really solve these complex solutions and provide benefit. Well, Itachi Energy is providing the grid technology. We are investing at the moment 1.5 billion US into expansion of transformer capacity and another 4.5 billion into uh, all the remaining businesses. Uh, we are investing into SF6 free switch gear, which plays a big role in decarbonization as well. And of course, digitalization and service. With the demand increase we see from Gen AI, from data center, you need a bigger planning horizon. And since the demand is bigger than we can supply, we have to plan together. This leads to a new way uh, to dealing with our customers. We need framework agreements, long-term agreements, capacity resolutions, because it is now with a higher visibility going forward. Now we have to plan ahead for 10 or 20 years. Trust, collaboration, and uh, having a common goal, the decarbonization of our society brings us together and is changing the way how we are working.